let's take a break from election anxiety by focusing on an avatar for America who's guaranteed to be disappointing. And here we see what a per cell looks like under a microscope. Grant's checking his own pulse because there's really no proof he's alive. Gail's smiling because she thinks she really was killed off and doesn't have to do this anymore. You get so few non-villainous monocle users anymore. Mayor Randolph Hearst, big fan of sleds and trying to shoot Charlie Chaplin. Gruber, hoping for a better life for his descendants Hans and Simon. John Hamilton, who of course played the Wicked Wizard of the West in The Witch of Oz. I will say, this is my favorite Crane Whitley movie. I'm skeptical that this thing has any characters or events. The long-awaited collaboration between the director of one episode of The Bob Cummings Show and a guy who was in Birth of a Nation. Chapter 9, Triple Tragedy, When I Cut Three of My Fingers. We all know it's Maldor. You don't need to call him the Scarab when you're just talking to the audience. Ah, two previously on blurbs. This one has Gail's driver's license photo. I'm Gail Richards, and I approve this message. Hey there, Gailey girl, flying in a plane so fancy free. Hello, DoorDash order for Matson. It's Captain America. So we're safe as long as he doesn't try to protect us. We keep getting all these warehouse fights, and it's always the same stuff inside the warehouse. Why can't we get a fight at, like, a fulfillment center for distributing carnival prizes? Let him hit each other with inflatable mallets and oversized off-brand Hello Kitty plushies. Oh, she's going down! Never mind, she's staying level. I had to try that at physical therapy after my car accident. And slide into first on your back. Oh, but he's still in third. Fight choreography by Cirque de Blase. Still contributing to the great chair shortage of 44. No, he shot a gauge chair phone car. Oh, just blow me up already. This gauge's measurement is inversely proportional to our interest. That wasn't even one of the henchmen. Cap just punched the script supervisor. Cap, why did the DA wait for you to show up instead of rescuing me himself? They had five minutes to film this rear projection rig, and they're putting it all on camera. There's a time bomb on the plane that just took off. What's the radio wavelength of that plane? 1575. Your single employee, who's the only woman in this city, is about to be blown up, but you take your time untying him. Gail is just fully dissociating. Calling Gail Richards. Calling Gail Richards. Come in, Gail. This is Gail. Go ahead. There's a time bomb in your plane. Bail out. Bail out. Okay, Grant. Grant? Who's Grant? I'm wearing the mask. No, it's Coleman Francis' skydivers. I'll give them credit. It's new for them to cut this much out of the cliffhanger. Their cheating really has reached new impressive lengths. Meanwhile, at Epcot's Italy Pavilion... Scarab must have feared the blowgun was... Is that Davis? I forgot Grant had a second... Employee? Consultant? I never learned who Davis was. There wasn't even a fragment of it left in the wreckage. I don't think those two prisoners will help us much. They're just two small-time thugs hired by Matson for that particular job. He hired them on Thug's I List. I wonder if the Scarab ever heard that the police make plaster of Paris copies of all important pieces of evidence. That's what you well, wonder? We didn't have time to make a replica of that blow gun. Someone was too busy showing it to Maldor. The Scarab doesn't. We could let the news leak out through the underworld that we have an exact duplicate from which Grayson can identify the owner of the original. Grant's really sticking with the lie about being better prepared strategy, huh? What's wrong with boot blacking? I like it very much. 
after my shoes shine my Zorro mustache. You could just yell and he'd probably hear you. Go ahead, Mark. Number 31 reports the DA has a plaster model of the blowgun. He's wired Grayson to come here to identify the owner. That's all. A model? Why did they make a model of it? Yeah, everyone needs a hobby. Procedure, I suppose. This calls for action. We have no time to lose. Well, it calls for what passes for action in this serial. Put every available man on the job. Check reservations on every train, bus, and plane coming into the city. Find out about all reservations in all the hotels. Oof, and Comic-Con's in town this week. Captain Baton Twirler! This is a good reproduction. You're the best plant expert slash prop builder we have. I'd like to see somebody translate those fake mayan hieroglyphics I painted on it. I really want to see them try. I worked really hard on it. This is the office. Yes, Commissioner. He's right here. Oh, now the Commissioner thinks we'll just welcome him back after he disappeared yes. for four episodes? They fell for it, Grant. A man just asked about Grayson at the Hotel Metropole. Also, I shot they my phone scenes from episode one five, five seconds ago. This afternoon. Fine. That's just what I hope to hear. Have you got a man at the Metropole? Yes. Donovan is taking the doorman's place. Because oh, Superman and Green Lantern ain't got nothing on him. Else around. I want them to be able to get away with the blowgun so we can follow them to the scarab. We better give them a little time to get organized. Then we'll deliver this right into their hands. The world's largest stogie. Ooh, a new boring looking building. The Metropolis Hotel, we're finally getting Superman back! Da 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 I can dream, right? Why is there an animation reference model for Bambi on the desk? Now to pull out my laptop and check some email. What makes the tube explode? You press the doorbell, and on the second chime, the wire will burn too, causing the tube to drop and break. Oi, I'm from somewhere else. A new building means new parking shots. This is Donovan, the doorman. Manson and two others went in a few minutes ago. One of them stayed in the lobby. You look at it, I guess, and the others went up to the room. What about that car? Parked around the corner. Around the corner? That's where the shop is. Drive around and watch that car. If they should leave before I can get back, travel. Sucker, I'm taking off for Gotham City. At least the serial set there actually has comic book characters. Matson and dead meat, how can I direct your call? Okay. We'll take care of him. The DA's coming up here alone. He's carrying a long tubular case. That really piqued Maldor's interest. Why is he coming before Grayson gets here? I don't know, but he's got the blowgun. That's all we want. Oh, you're so singularly minded. Wait, is the hotel hallway just the same set as the hallway in Grant's building? I guess this town has exactly one architect and one interior designer. So, Grant, how many cases have you tried this week? None? Not looking good for getting reelected. So he knows they're laying a trap for him and he just goes himself without any precaution. Smart, Grant. Landshark! I'm locked in, but there are no gauges in here! A classic doorbell triggering a vial of gas plan. That old cliche. Haunt season is over, but the fog still lingers. Oh no, Phantom Menace is starting! Boy, this serial hates chairs. Looks like Cheech and Chong's dressing room. since you played dead, Grant. Well, Matson, this would be a perfect opportunity to shoot Grant, make sure he's dead. No, but I guess you only like killing your own teammates. This isn't my signed Rita Hayworth poster. This is it. I'll take the blowgun out the back way. Kenki. As soon as the gas clears, you go in and finish the DA. Wait, why didn't you finish the DA? You were just in there. That just thickens me accent. So he's surviving poisonous gas by having his face near a vent? Yeah, that's science. Never bring a knife to a shoe fight. 
oh crap, they can both kick? Well, it's a stalemate. And J.D. Vance gets to work. Ah, crap, now I gotta actually work. Person who Matson knows what I look like and will know it's me following him away! Since Matson's the one who opened that window, this counts both as Grant killing someone instead of bringing them in for questioning, and Matson killing his own teammate. Oh, it's that suburban block you have to drive past between the city and the desert. The thrills of a chase through Mayfield. Matson drove out of the alley and Miss Richards after him here to take my car. Fair warning, I probably will crash it. So that scarab agent who was a lookout is just gonna roam free, I guess. Calling Gail Richards. Calling Gail Richards. By the way, should we start using codes instead of loudly broadcasting everything over public airwaves? Matson's about a quarter of a mile ahead of me. Don't get too close. I'm following you in Gunnivan's car. Keep me posted. Don't radio and drive, kids. Is Matson falling asleep at the wheel? Oh no, the creeping terror is starting. Calling Grant Gardner. When the hell did he have time to stop and take off his shirt? He just turned off toward that old barn east of the river. I know the place. Is it Watson Feed Barn from Episode 2, or is it a different barn that will almost definitely be played by the same barn? Don't start anything unless you absolutely have to. Ooh, love what they've done with the place. I'll have this fixed in a minute. I'll hurry it up. Oh, I stopped moving slow as molasses now, cereal. Ooh, she parked in the La Palma lot. Purse, strut. Purse, strut. Calling H1. Uh, now over here, I gotta consolidate my radios. Come in, M3. Did you get the blowgun? Yes, everything's okay. I'm not so sure. Norton hasn't reported in yet. A problem with his antivirus? He hasn't. I'd better go back to the hotel and find out what happened. Hello, here to read the meter? I'm going back to look for him. You're staying right here, man. So Gail has the exact same powers as Cap, a gun. You'll pay for evicting Mr. Ed from this place. Tie him up. Yeah, that's what Lionel makes them do weekly anyway. Oh no, the rancor! I actually didn't care about stopping her, I just love levers. That was quick and easy. What the screenwriter right, said after crapping this out. He worked with Captain America, he's probably on his way here now. To do the same thing, but even worse. Too much stuff belongs to the museum stored here. And we can't take a chance of letting anyone find it. It's not gunpowder, it's just tins of liquid IV. Spread a powder thing. We blow up the whole works and the girl with it. Ah, I never get bored of watching cars make this exact turn. Pumpier than Kilimanjaro Safari. Wow, I really screwed up his suspension. Next episode, we see about 200 feet of gunpowder trail wandering around like the family circus kid trails. This is the one day Gruber was supposed to go on the mission instead of me, but he called in sick. Ah, good thing Hay's not flammable. Okay, time for more just throwing stuff and punching. Ah, sounds like another of the same exact fight going on up there. So we're back to a barn fight, huh? But this time without the tractor that actually made the earlier fight worth setting in a barn. Is this whole serial going to be even more boring versions of stuff that already bored us once? Pickaxe somersaulting, real popular among acrobatic prospectors. So where's all that stuff belonging to the museum that Cap would definitely recognize? Chair broken, take a shot. You know, if I kill another three of your minions, I get a free sandwich. Is he fighting with the fake blowgun now? And again, maybe the extra chairs were the museum artifacts. Matson started the fire, and to think they blamed the cow. Boy, 
boy, Margaret Hamilton's taking forever to appear. Wait, no, I mean John Hamilton. We already know Gale has the power to cut the several minutes it takes to escape the explosion out of the cliffhanger. Why are we worried? Damn it, this window's too small to throw you out of. The fuse starts going around the barn like Muppet Treasure Island. And we cut to three weeks later. Boy, now all the chairs are broken. The Avenging Corpse? Finally an Avenger in this Captain America series. I guess it's Marvel Zombies? Ah, this time both Cap and Gale were definitely caught in that explosion and definitely didn't just escape at the last minute. The stakes just keep getting so... Lateral. I would like to thank my patrons not only for their continued financial support, but also for helping me brainstorm jokes on some Patreon exclusive live streams. These fine folks pointed things out that were worth making fun of, but then I lost their observations and explosion and had to rely on Plaster of Paris replicas of their observations. If you would like to join the next Patreon live stream, even a $1 pledge gets you access. And at $2, you can see this month's other riff, a throwback to early settlers of New England, just in time for Thanksgiving. Also, if you live in the U.S. and you haven't already, please vote, and please not for the senile lunatic convicted felon rapist with zero redeeming qualities who already screwed up the country so much once that we're still cleaning up his mess, and whose every campaign promise is to be even worse to marginalized people than he already was. And just as importantly, please be sure to vote locally. I think if there's one thing this serial teaches us, it's the importance of local office in a roundabout way. So find the candidates who will work to serve the people of your community and who will not waste taxpayer dollars on running around in pajamas in pursuit of a single rich weirdo who's only a threat to other rich weirdos. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm off to go undercover as a doorman just to find out who took my lunch out of the fridge. So until next time, this is Dave, signing off.